Hello, it's uh, January 21st. Welcome to the live event for MicroMyalgiaRelief.com. Uh, don't see any viewers right now, but if you come, let me know that the question and answer uh, app is open and you're welcome to ask your questions. So it wasn't too long ago that I was in an online session uh, with a woman who said, gosh, I've got this thing that I just can't quit. And it happened to be uh, cigarettes, not a lot of them, just one a day. Uh, we'd sneak away all alone, have the cigarette, and then come back. And so I wanted to just talk about <clears throat> the idea of addiction as an idea of patterns, patterns that we can't stop, and then to talk about the ice method. Talk about addictions and patterns, reactivity in terms of the ICE method, <clears throat> and how with the ICE method you can actually um, change the chemistry that's sitting there and set up that actually spurs the response or the need to do something. Um, and before we get into this, I mean, this is a person who was dealing with I can't stop cigarettes, but for me, I never smoked cigarettes, haven't used drugs, haven't ever been addicted to alcohol, but I've been addicted to many things in my life, right? The patterns that I feel like I just have to do, I don't have any choice, that up comes this emotion and I need to do it. You know, right now I think of like, whenever uh, out dancing, it's like, oh, there's this emotional, um, <clears throat> it's hard for me to be out there on that floor doing that. I think of another pattern for me that got wired in early was just this need to be doing justice. Okay, and thinking back to <clears throat> family, it was like, that felt like that was my job growing up. It was a deeply established pattern, so when I would see these situations, it was like, I didn't have any choice. Like for this woman who when um, that time of the day came up, she needed to have that cigarette. So. I just want to uh, look at this for a moment this morning because ICE, the ICE method, using memory reconsolidation actually offers us a different way of dealing with patterns and addictions than we're used to. Okay? And so for this person, uh, eventually, and this is the amazing thing, eventually people will often say what the actual real issue is. And it came up that she said, that's my time for myself. But didn't even hear herself saying that, that that actually was the ground of why she felt like she needed to go and have that cigarette. Even though after every cigarette she just hated herself for smoking. It was like, so is that like the only time that you have in your day, I asked? It's absolutely and completely yours, and nobody interferes with it. And she thought for a moment and said, you know, that, that is. All of the other time of my day, I'm either doing something um, very, very busy, or I'm at the call of somebody else, serving somebody else's needs in my own mind, that that's the way my day goes. And this one cigarette a day is my one space that is all my own. And then she realized that, wow, cigarette means space. And we chatted some more about it and said, you know what, that space is an awful lot like the calm space of the ice method. It's a space where you put yourself and you're not in reaction to anything else. And your body can go and rest in restoration mode. And I said it would make sense to me if you would do anything, even keeping a habit that you hate, like smoking these cigarettes, that you would do anything to preserve those six or seven or eight minutes a day where nothing else goes on. <clears throat> so now what's the difference between how the ICE method would handle this and an approach that um, might be more typical that says once you recognize this, now you can choose something different. And the difference is this, <clears throat> that the ICE method actually pays attention to the emotion that's right there of I need to have my space. I've never, you know, I had to carve space out probably from early on or whatever. And you simply pay attention. And whatever shows up that's not calm, you actually replace the molecules that were not calm with new molecules that are calm. 
using the ICE method, right? You identify the issue that shows up, and in this case, as you go back, it's going to be earlier and earlier in your life. The points where it's like, wow, I didn't have my own safe space as a kid. And so I actually had to make that space. It was very difficult to do. It would make perfect sense for continuing to smoke so that you could preserve that space for yourself. That's the sign that that is still a space that you have, right? But when you go back and you discover those emotions, then you simply use the ice method. Move out to the calm state where you're creating a different chemistry, <clears throat> the chemistry of calm. Literally, different peptides are formed based on whatever emotion we're experiencing in the moment. And then we go ahead and replace that with the old stored, uh, in, in exchange for the old stored emotional peptides that got built up based on experiences from the past. And when we do that, we remove the charge that's around the behavior, the addictive behavior. It's no longer charged. It no longer serves an emotional purpose. And oftentimes that makes things much, much easier to take a different choice, a different path. It becomes not hard work anymore. Okay, and as I've said in other places, I developed the ICE method basically out of a lot of study, but out of first being a person who was using EFT, the emotional freedom technique, which is also known as tapping, developed by Gary Craig. And in that <clears throat> modality, people have done a lot of work with addictions and had a lot of success. And in that EFT process, I believe this same, uh, at least when the process works, I believe this same aspect of memory reconsolidation is happening, taking away the charge on things from the past. Now, the alternative to that, sort of the more traditional approach, is Okay, so you recognize that you've used cigarettes uh, for a safe space, to have your own space, and now I want you to recognize that that's not a good solution. And so we're going to build a new habit to do something else, that every time you need safe space, you're going to actually um, recognize the need to smoke, and then you're going to make a different choice. And that works many times, but the difference is that you're always in reaction to the thing that is emotionally still there. Until you replace that peptide, that old stored peptide with calm, you're going to be living your react life in reaction to that old stored peptide, to the old situation. In this case, for this person, I never had any space to my own when I was a little kid. So no matter what you do now, it's a reaction to that, and that's still charged unless you use the ICE method or EFT or something else that's going to replace the chemistry there, the synapse between the brain cells that was stored with fear or anger or sadness or whatever that emotion was. So if you want to not be reactive to that anymore, then you move into a calm space, right? And I show that elsewhere on the website. Choose a single point to observe. Now your consciousness is outside of paying attention to the old situation second point, and then observe a space that has nothing in it, where you're actually reacting to nothing. And when you're reacting to nothing, you're creating different chemistry. And from there, just by conscious observation, when you observe back on that old stored peptide, it replaces, the old one replaces with the new one. And you're calm. And this makes it much, much easier to make a different choice, free choice, in the face of an addictive behavior. But an addiction to something, you know, that's not socially acceptable, right, like drugs or alcohol or cigarettes, is dynamically not any different from a pattern that I'm committed to out of reactivity. That a certain thing wasn't safe, so now instead of doing that, I do the opposite thing. That's just a pattern that's in reaction to the old thing. And there's nothing really wrong with that, but then we are living our life in reactivity to our stored experience, not in freedom in this moment to make whatever choice I wish to make in this moment. So whether a person is dealing with socially unacceptable addictive behavior 
or really socially acceptable, um, deeply ingrained pattern like I had for seeking justice. If those are simply reactivity, then it takes a certain amount of energy to maintain those, to keep them going. Because the energy is in reaction to. The body is always reacting to a previous fear or anger or sadness. And that simply takes the body's resources. If we could calm, using memory reconsolidation, ice method, EFT, whatever, if we could calm those previous stored memories, then the resources of the body automatically don't have to deal with that anymore. They turn to rest and restoration. Our health is better, and we're free now to make choices that are not just like, oh, that bad thing happened, so I'm not going to do that again. Okay, and for myself, I actually reached this point. Um, we live in a little town of Chelan, and I actually got involved in trying to stop um, big corporate Walmart from coming in uh, to this little town, thinking of sort of what impact it would have on small businesses and all these different things. And I just naturally went into that, as naturally went into that as this person who smokes their cigarette every day. Just a very, very natural thing for me to do. And at the time, I thought, oh, that's who I am. I'm the person who fights for justice, you know, right, wrong, or otherwise. But seeing myself in that way. And when it was all done, I was exhausted. And it was at that time that I began to realize, wow, you know, I really just ran my old pattern again. Before that, I had been um, out and actually written a book and done a big advocacy ride for uh, gay rights in America. And before that, I'd written a book and done a big advocacy ride for uh, Nupiat Eskimo people where I used to serve as a pastor up in Nome, Alaska. Okay, so this pattern, not really dynamically much different than picking up a cigarette every day. Living in reaction, reactivity to those stored things from the past that made it make sense for my life to show up that way. remember a pastor one time, a long time ago, who said, oh, it just totally makes sense for these people to be drinking in this community. Right? Not this fight against it, but this acceptance of, wow, the reasons are here that this behavior would show up. The reasons are there that it would make sense for me, for um, an automatic response of fighting for justice would come up. Replace those old stored peptides with calm and a person is now free. So now when I'm doing this work, right, of uh, ICE method, it's not out of that old justice pattern. Will things show up? Sure, here and there. But when they do, I recognize they take me out of the calm space that otherwise I pretty much live my life in. And when I recognize that I've been taken out of the calm space and that I'm not calm anymore, then I can simply pay attention. What's going on here? What am I sensing? What's my emotion? Anger, fear, sadness. Where do I feel this in the body? You know, is it my stomach, chest, shoulders? And then is there an experience that this is tied to? Just take what you get. If you get something, you get it. If you don't, you don't. And then you use the calm space. You move out into that calm space, first observing a single point, second point, and then the space that's in between that has nothing in it. That easily, with my conscious mind, I can create a different chemistry, which I can then use to observe back on that upset and replace chemistry. And when you're working with yourself, especially when you're working with yourself, just simply keep paying attention. When we're dealing with these long, long patterns, they're often automatic and subconscious, and we run them so consistently and persistently that we don't even notice that they're patterns. You know, I thought, ah, I'm a person of justice. Well, I'm a person of that pattern. A person who says, ah, I just can't knock these cigarettes. You know, that that's who I am. I'm a smoker of cigarettes. Well, you're a person of this pattern. And that pattern is stored with peptides, emotional chemistry. And that emotional chemistry, it's actually very easy to change it. And that's what I love about the ice method. 
it really does open up freedom, whether it's to get away from smoking and make another free choice or um, for me to calm down those patterns that compelled me to do my life in a certain way that ultimately I got really tired from that. Okay, and at the time I didn't know anything about the ice method, but eventually EFT came along. I started to use that and started actually to get some insights and, and have some uh, changes happening in my life, memory reconsolidation by the tapping procedure that's used in EFT. But it was when the ice method came along and I realized, wow, really the whole dynamic of things can be this way. That I can have calm as the state that I live on. And that's very different from where I used to live, where most everything was a reactivity. Became aware that, wow, I can live out of this calm space with whatever exceptions occur, you know, with whatever upsets me with anger, fear, or sadness. And that whenever one of those happens, I can use the ice method and come back to calm. And in the process, I will be creating more calm in my life, expanding the circle of calm. Because I'll be replacing agitated peptides, either from future anxieties or past experiences or present concerns. I'll be replacing those with calm chemistry. You know, even when I talk about it, it just sounds too crazy that it could work this way. But the science of memory reconsolidation, that discovery in 2000 says, you know, this actually is the way it works. And my experience of working with myself and with many, many clients is that it really does work this way. And it provides remarkable results for our physical well-being, the way we feel physically, including, crazily enough, things like back pain, joint pain, chronic pain, fibromyalgia. And it also brings calm, permanent sense of calm, to things that have been bugging us for decades. That, I believe, is a remarkable result. And so for this woman that I worked with who discovered the pattern behind her cigarettes, she's now free, and we did it actually during the session to calm down whatever showed up. She's now free to just simply continue that process whenever an upset occurs. And she's free to smoke or free to not smoke, whereas before she had no freedom. And if it shows up as non-free, then it's like, okay, what's not free about this one? What's the emotion here? And you can ice that. And you can return to a place of freedom where you can choose. So just to recap here, started out talking about addiction, but not really dynamically so much different from patterns. One socially unacceptable, the other might be socially acceptable. But either way, they are reactions to experiences that got stored in the synapses of our brain with certain chemistry. And that chemistry is replaceable with calm, so that whether we're dealing with an addiction or a pattern, those patterns of reactivity can be calmed such that we're no longer reacting, but we now become actually free to act in the manner of our choosing. All right, thought I'd share this today. Um, EFT, the Emotional Freedom to, uh, Technique, has quite a long tradition in working, helping people with addictions. And I wanted to show you how the ICE method um, is just a very simple and direct way of dealing with things, addictive behaviors, uh, once we just pay attention to them and use this calming technique and then the exchange of memory reconsolidation. Thanks a lot. Have a great day. Hope you enjoyed this video. Um, it's available at YouTube for later viewing. If you want to share it, um, just press the share button. All right. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.